Hello everyone and welcome to Beginner Web Design episode 21 and in this episode it's going to be kind of another example tutorial and we're going to be taking a look at another shopping interface here. So we have two buttons which are going to change this paragraph here to reflect the information for that button. So if we click on this one it's going to show us information about bikes and then there will also be a buy now button at the bottom of that and if we click that buy now button this total up here is going to change based on the price of that item. So the HTML markup is really, really simple. I just have a header, two buttons, and a paragraph tag. We will be adding more as we go on. And let's just jump right into it. The first thing we want to do is set up some variables. So we need to specify the info and the price for both uh, product one and product two. So because of that, I'm going to start using some arrays. So uh, let's just say hmm, inf uh, var info is new array, and let's say var prices is new array, and then the info of the bike is going to be a bike has two wheels, and then the info, actually we'll just do the prices for the bike, is going to be $20. Now you notice that I did $20 like that and I didn't type it like this or anything else. The reason being is because uh, the browser is going to be doing some adding. It's going to be taking the current value of the total and then it's going to be adding whatever uh, the price of that item is. So for example right now if we bought a bike it would be 0 plus 20 and it would have to figure out what that is. And uh, because of that, it has to remain an integer. You cannot add two strings in JavaScript with them as they are. They have to be changed into integers first. So let's just also set the info of the trike, which is going to be a trike has three wheels. And then the info, the prices for the trike going to be ten dollars. I'll just put in some line breaks here just to make it easier to see. Alright, now let's actually start doing the functions. So on these buttons I'm going to add an on click event and the function is going to be called show info. And I'm going to be using the same function for both of these buttons because they're pretty much going to do the exact same thing. So we're going to have to specify a variable in here. So I'll just make this show info for the bike and we can go ahead and copy this and then over here we show info, show info for the trike now we can go ahead and set up this variable and I'll name this vari this uh, function rather and I'll name the variable in that function product and so what we have to do is select this paragraph tag and then change it so in order to select it we're going to have to give it an ID I'll just name it info and then, of, of course, we're going to be using document.getElementById info. And to change it, we're going to be using inner HTML. And inner HTML will let you change anything inside that element. Uh, it'll just clear it all and replace it to whatever you want it to be. So we're going to put an equal sign there just to show that we're changing it. And then we're going to change it to the array of info with the variable of whatever uh, whatever the, the uh, button sent. So I, kn I know I kind of phrased that a little bit confusingly, but we've gone over this before. Basically, the button is sending bike to this function, and this function is putting bike into here, which is going to say go into the array of info and pull out bike, which is going to be this line up here. So now, if we go ahead and preview this in our browser, we can see that uh, whatever one we click, the corresponding information shows up in that paragraph tag. Now, I know we've gone over before editing the CSS, where we would actually have two different elements, and then clicking either one of these 
would just show and hide elements based on what should be displayed. I think we did that in the last episode, episode 21 at 20 actually. Um, so you can do that with this. I just decided to show you a new way to do it, which is with inner HTML. Uh, but either way would be fine. So uh, the next thing we have to do is add another button down here that sets the uh, that changes the total. So I'm just going to put this straight into this markup up here. So I'll just say button and buy now ten dollars. Oh no, sorry, this one is twenty dollars actually. And then I'm going to copy that and place that down here. And this one is ten dollars. So you can see automatically we have the button to purchase that. But of course we need to put a function on that to actually do something. So now what I want to do is add an on click of event on here. So I'm going to say on click and as soon as we try to type a double quote you can see that all of these colors start changing and there's a reason that everything looks kind of weird and that is because when you put another double quote here this line thinks that the string of this variable ends here because it just sees that other double quote and just says okay time to stop so if we leave it like that uh, obviously it's not going to work so what we have to do is put a backslash behind that quote and that just tells JavaScript that this is supposed to be part of the string and it's not supposed to be telling JavaScript to be doing anything else so it you know when we go into the actual HTML of this page that backslash won't be there but it is important for JavaScript now inside this on click uh, we're gonna say let's just use the function by and then this is also going to have a variable inside here and this variable will be uh, bike again and then again we need to put another quote here but I'm just gonna put a backslash behind it and it looks a little bit weird but just try to look past the backslashes just to see what how it's actually going to look and I'm just gonna copy and paste this uh, from here and replace bike with trike and now obviously it's not going to look any different because we didn't actually change any of what's displayed but if I go ahead and inspect element you see that it looks perfect it says the variable by with the uh, attribute bike here so now let's actually go ahead and set up this function so function by with product and uh, this is going to be a little bit more complex so the first thing I want to do is I've already done this here uh, off camera I'm sorry about that but I've just set up a span around this number uh, just so we can target it now you'll notice that I'm not using the entire header because it's just more trouble than it's worth we only want to edit this number not the entire header and you'll also notice that I put this span uh, around the number itself and not including this dollar sign again it's just more trouble than it's worth JavaScript doesn't know how to add dollar figures together it only knows how to add numbers so uh, we can just put the dollar sign in front of whatever is being edited and then it'll work fine so again this span has an ID of price so that we can target it and so the first thing we want to do is we have to add the current total and the price of the item that's being purchased. So let's set up a variable and we'll name it current total. And this is going to be set to whatever is inside price. So var current total equals document dot get element by ID price. And we're going to use inner HTML here as well. Now you can see inner HTML can also return what's inside it doesn't have to be used just to edit it so just by doing this we put zero into this variable so uh, now we have sort of another problem because when we do that when we use inner HTML it only returns a string even though 
inside this element is only a number, it is still going to return a string just because that's the nature of inner HTML. It doesn't know how to do anything different. But, like I said, we can't add strings together. So what we actually have to do is convert that string into an integer. So in order to do that, we have to use another function. So we're going to say current total is going to now be equal to parse int. And then inside parse int, we're going to use current total. Now parse int just means change to integer, and it's a built-in function to JavaScript. We don't need to say function parse int or anything like that because JavaScript already knows what that is. We don't have to specify it. It's already built in. So all that parse int does is it takes whatever you throw at it. So we're throwing current total to parse int and it's going to return the integer value of that variable. So obviously it's going to take this zero, which is currently in a string and it's going to change that to be zero as an integer then we can go ahead and add them together. So now just to test, to make sure that this is working properly, we're just going to use an alert that we can delete later. So we're going to say current total plus 10. Now the reason why we're not just saying current total by itself is because zero is going to be zero whether it's in a string or an integer. It's going to look the same to us. It's just not going to look the same to JavaScript. So we have to put plus or minus or divided by or anything just to make sure that it can perform math with that integer. So now if we go ahead and preview it and select one of these products and click on buy now we get 10 which is the correct result. Now a lot of people get confused here because sometimes you will see 0 1 0 which is just 10 with a 0 in front of it and in this situation people would think oh well, that's correct. That still means 10. So it must indeed be converting it to an integer. However, that's not correct. JavaScript will always remove any zeros in front of the number. So if you see 010, that means that it's taking the string 0 and trying to add the integer 10, but it's not working very well. So it's just consolidating them together to make 010. So in order to make sure that this is correctly converting to an integer, it should say 10 and only 10. Nothing else, not 0, 1, 0, just 10. Now if we go ahead and add another 10 to it, we would see 20 and so on. But we know that it's working so we can get rid of that alert. So now this current total is set to 0. Now we just have to change it to be whatever uh, it, it should be after buying this item. So now we're going to say current total equals current total again plus the value of the array prices plus uh, whatever product was selected up here. And this is exactly the same way as we did it in the, in the show info function up here. We're going to be doing the exact same thing for buy. And then we can just actually just copy this. And now we're going to say whatever has the ID of price should be changed to this variable current total. Now it was all a little bit lengthy, but you can see it works perfectly. This changes to 20. If we click it again, it's 40, 60, 80, make it 90. And you could see that it's just working pretty well. And that's it. So you can see that we used kind of a lot of different things here. We used our arrays up here. We used our functions. And we used a new type of method called inner HTML. And we also used a new function called parse int to change something to an integer. So I hope this has shown you a few more JavaScript fundamentals. Make sure to watch the next video for even more.